Hello and good morning, sir. How are you doing? Hey, great. Nice to meet you. First, first of all, thank you so much for your dedication to our nation because we need leadership like you to extend beyond what your personal training and experiences, because those of us on the real streets of America, we, wh- wh- what do we have except for you guys to train us? Well, it's a, it's a pleasure. Yeah, that's what I really wanted to do with this book, to be able to take some of the institutionalized knowledge and to be able to, to share it with the rest of the world. I got to tell you, you, you're speaking my street when you say the art of clear thinking, because on my podcast shows on iHeartRadio, I never talk about cleaning. I always talk about clearing. And that word is so important to me. Agreed. I think it's the most important skill to be able to make good decisions. If you boil down our job as fighter pilots, it's to make thousands of decisions each flight often with incomplete information and lives on the line so that's one thing that we really spend a lot of time training is to to think clearly uh, to me the, the best compliment you can give somebody is that they are clear thinker not necessarily a, a smart thinker in reality aren't you a visionary in the way that because you have been trained to look out further than the normal person because i'm a third degree black belt i watch way ahead of what is about to happen and my mind it really does play games with me in the way of okay this is how it's going to play out and then it does how, how do you deal with that yeah, that's, that's a great thing. That's, that's a master at work. So you ultimately want to get to that point where you're seeing several steps ahead. Mm-hmm. And one thing I do as a fighter pilot instructor, I'm training new students. They're in their early to mid twenties, learning how to fly the F 35, the most advanced plane in the world. They're very skilled, but that's what I'm trying to teach them to be able to look two, three steps ahead. Cause a great pilot, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, uses uh, their uh, their instinct to be able to avoid situations where they require superior skill. Now, being inside that stealth, that means you're invisible. But but this book makes you visible to the rest of us now. What what is? I mean, that's got to play hell on your heart. Uh, well, two different things. So you want to be invisible on the battlefield. It's like playing football where you're uh, invisible and the uh, the enemy isn't. So it's an unfair advantage. Exactly how we want it. Uh, for this book, yeah, I, I wanted to to get it out there and to be able to share it with the rest of the world. We've been on the leading edge of decision-making theory since the 1970s, but a lot of it is just internal, not because it's classified or anything like that, just because we're so busy on the mission trying to execute, trying to help people on the battlefield. And now that I'm a reservist, only fly a couple times a month, I was able to dedicate all this energy to, to writing this book. Speaking of classified, did you have to go through the same rigmarole when it comes to the editing? You had to let the government read this first and then, then they gave you permission? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it had to go through a review at the Pentagon. It takes a long time. It's kind of a black box. You send it away and sometimes it takes years to come back. Wow. And fortunately, it didn't take that long in this case. But yeah, that's one thing every service member has to do. Send it to the Pentagon for review. Access, choose, execute so many people don't understand it but when they finally experience it they begin to activate it correct so i I break down decision making really really everybody's decision making is being called on on more than ever before so i i one of the arguments in the book is we're transitioning from more of management-based leadership to decision making leadership management was really born out of the industrial revolution where you're trying to control hundreds if not thousands of people and now there's just a report out of Silicon Valley that they expect the next billion dollar company to be run by less than three people. Yeah. So that's because AI can help augment your decision making. Same thing when I'm flying, I'm thousands of times more capable than I could be just on my own when I put on this suit of technology. So I talk through making good decisions. First, it's called the ACE Helix. First, you have to assess the problem. If you don't have a good understanding of that problem, you're not gonna be able to consistently make good decisions. Next is choosing a correct course of action developing courses Mm -hmm. of action through creativity and then finally executing sometimes we'll have thousands of people whose eyes are on us uh, as we're executing a mission so i talk through uh controlling your emotions and uh, executing under pressure Mm. you use one of my favorite words transition people don't study their transitions i keep a defrag journal where i ask questions and i question answers because that transition period is is a giving as well as it's a taking period Absolutely. That's the most important and and pivotal time when we're executing missions is those transition periods. People, once things are static, it's a lot easier for people to to comprehend and understand and know their role. But during those transition periods, that's really because one thing we do a lot is is planning missions. So it's a lot like project management uh, in the civilian world. We're bringing together hundreds, if not thousands of people to align towards one common goal, overall mission success. And so that's really what we hammer is those transition periods when we're going in, executing the mission, 
once everything's done going out, those are the key periods where things start to break down and you can end up getting caught with a bad decision. How important is it to write the story before it happens, but don't really dive into the story and get emotionally involved because it hasn't happened yet? Because you know how we are. We like to judge things and it hasn't even happened yet. Yes, absolutely. So it is important to have as a thought experiment to go through exactly what you think is going to happen, but realize you can't script things. Uh, the fog and friction of war, uh, everybody has a plan uh, until they get hit in the face. Uh, you know, uh, Sir Mike Tyson said that. So you really have to be able to adapt to the changing conditions, especially when you're going against a thinking adversary. If you're in business, uh, you really have to, to be able to be flexible. That's really the key to being able to make good decisions and not getting locked into a, a, a certain way of thinking. The book we're talking about is The Art of Clear Thinking. You say make the right decisions. I was recently with uh, Damon John from, from uh, Shark Tank, and he said that, you know, that you, you've, you've got to be able to fail in order to learn. I don't like those failure moments. How do you deal with them? So one thing we do is we we get used to, to failure moments in the debrief. So we are pushing ourselves. You don't rise to the level of your expectation. You fall to the level of your preparation. So we, in training, will execute our missions to be far above what we'll see in combat. And that pushes us to failure. And so afterwards, even though we're flying only about an hour and a half, we will spend two to six hours debriefing mm -hmm. the mission, going through everything that went wrong. Sometimes we'll listen to the same radio call 15 times to understand how we can do it better the next time. So I think it's about being uh, to, to checking your ego at the door. These debriefs are, are sterile. We're just trying to learn. We're not trying to pass blame. And then to develop lessons, learn a few key points that we can use to get better the next time we fly a similar mission. Those debriefs, oh God, that, that would be the thing that would inspire the hell out of me because I mean, it, it's breaking it down, breaking it down, breaking it down. And you do learn from stuff like that because I swear every time you go in and listen, you hear something different. Yeah, they're, they're pretty eye-watering to see. So we'll sometimes have a, a young lieutenant who is critiquing the base commander. So rank comes off in the debrief. It's nameless, faceless. You are just focused on how can we be get better. You're like a surgeon in there analyzing everything that went wrong and how to do it better the next time. So I think that's really one of the important keys to, uh, to fighter pilot success. And even though we spend two to six hours, I think – I think I think it's one thing that the civilian world really needs to to improve on. Uh, just spending five minutes after any sort of project or event, just going through what are three things that uh, we did well. What are three things mm -hmm. that we can do better the next time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I like building those bridges because it, it really, really it helps you with clear thinking. Because you know, I always look at it as being like, look at your closet. If you go in there and clean out that closet, you're just going to throw stuff back into it again. But when you're clear thinking, you put things in their place, or as I call it, creating folders so that I know where I, where things can be found when I need them. Absolutely, it's uh, asymmetric advantage. Clear thinking is 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 critical, especially when you're dealing with complex uh, complex situations, especially with uncertainty. You want to be a clear thinker. Uh, again, that's that's the best and highest compliment that I think you can give somebody that they're a clear thinker. Uh, they understand concepts well. How those all interlock together to be able to come up with a good solution. How do you find focus in a digital world? Because there's so much content out there that can poison your next decision. Yeah, so that's one of the topics I, I talk to in the book. I talk and I and I go through it through a story of Eisenhower. So Eisenhower chose to delay D-Day by a day yep. and then execute, even though uh, the weather was pretty poor. There's a very narrow window. So he was a master at being able to analyze what was important versus urgent. And so if you graph those together, you can form quadrants. And so I think that's the the most important thing. There's a there's a study I cite in there that if you can just write down what's urgent, what's important on your task list, you can be 60% more effective in terms of how you prioritize. So just understanding that using the quadrant method that I talked to in the book can really help you to uh, see what's important, what's urgent, what are those emails that are just nagging at you, and what is true deep work that's going to help you to achieve your goals. The book we're talking about is The Art of Clear Thinking. Because I practice this, this is my daily discipline every day. The thing that I do find myself doing, though, is arguing with myself, and you've got to get control of that ego, don't you? Yeah, so I think a lot of people think fighter pilots are these uh, like maverick characters that are just arrogant out yeah. there, but we've actually really focused on on confidence and separating that from arrogance because like i said we're planning missions we're bringing hundreds of people together if you go in beating your chest saying that you you're flying the best jet and these other aircraft these intelligence surveillance reconnaissance aircraft are lesser pilots uh that's not a great thing for a team so 
So really for us, it's being able to bring the team together to make the sum greater than the parts. Because when we're flying, one con- misconception people have is uh, it's like Top Gun. You're just sending up your best pilot against their best pilots, this 1v1 cage match. But really, it's it's more like a football team. You're sending up hundreds of aircraft and it's multi-domain. So you have people in the space, cyber, on the ground, all working mm-hmm. together against the enemy. And you want a synergistic effect. You want the sum to be greater than the parts. Man, to be in a room with that many creative spirits and people that have the ambition to save the world, basically, as well as our nation. I mean, how do you keep it into one solid line? You'd have to have that clear mind. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, as a mission commander, you have to be a clear thinker. You have a lot of type A personalities, a lot of other really smart people. So if, if you're not thinking clearly, you're going to get kind of torn apart. So it's really important to be able to to work your way up to be that mission commander in terms of thinking as clear as possible. And like you said, you want to clear out the non-important things. So when we're flying, we call that our cross check. What are the important variables that we have to focus on? And one of the things in the book I talk about is focusing on variables that adhere to a power law. So most, most things that we look at in a day-to-day life We've evolved to think linearly. You walk yeah. walk 30 steps, you're 30 steps away. But really, most of the variables, if you take it to the extreme, uh, behave non-linearly, exponentially, or the law of diminishing return, or a long tail power law. So I go into each one of those and how they can drastically affect what's going on. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's important to be able to identify those key variables that can have an outsized impact on the outcome. This book is for everybody. I'm talking about business people, retail creative outlets even even high school students need to read this book because it it opens up your heart but it also clears your mind in the way of i can do because i'm going to let all this other stuff go and and that's what i love about this is that you're so honest with us about this yeah i wanted to make it something that a lot of people can take away from so uh i i talk through key moments in history I talk through some of my flying stories. I even talk through business decisions. So I talk about how Excite.com failed to buy Google back in the 1990s for $750,000, mainly because the CEO failed to understand the power law uh, that was occurring at the time. So it's a book that I think everybody can get something out of. I really enjoy books like Malcolm Gladwell's books Mm. that weave stories together to be able to, to show those lessons as opposed to just state facts. So I didn't want it to be a boring white paper. I wanted it to to be this uh, suspenseful interweaving of stories that teaches the the reader these lessons over the course of it. How do you deal with the separation between church and state? In other words, who you are as a real person versus who you are as the pilot or and the instructor? Because there's, there's certain things that I have to go through on a daily basis that says, okay, you are no longer the guy who's in there loving up on his dog. You're now on a mission to reach people. It's when I put on the earphones. That's when all of a sudden I become this guy. What do you have to do mm-hmm. to become you as that pilot? Yeah, you have to compartmentalize and you have to detach. So yes. as... When you are uh, planning these missions, it's important that you give an honest assessment of your capability and your strengths and your weaknesses. But as soon as that canopy is coming down, you have to think that you are the best pilot for this job and all that doubt and fear and anything else has to go away. You have to just focus on executing. So yeah, I think uh, having a uh, a uh, accurate mindset beforehand is very, very important um, so that you don't overstate your capabilities. But as soon as that canopy is coming down, you have to think you're the man, you're the person that is in the best position to be able to affect this mission. One of the subliminal messages that I picked up in the book is, is that you, you don't teach us to run away from the fire. You teach us to go into the fire. In other words, to be prepared for all changes. And when those changes occur, be clear minded enough to, to, to make a better decision and, and, and get the job done. Yeah, that's how you push yourself. You want to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. So each day you want to do something that that uh, that makes you uncomfortable, that's a little bit painful, that helps you grow over time. If you're just static, you're not learning anything. So I think the most important concept of this book is to to continue to learn and to uh, to trust yourself as you're learning more. I think a lot of people a lot of people give away their decision making and critical thinking to committees to computer models and one of the things i really want people to do with this book is to make a decision on their own first hold themselves accountable Mm. and then compare it to those committees compare it to those computer models because two things will happen one if uh you'll learn something if that committee or computer model comes up with a better plan than you or two you can cross check it and realize that something has uh 
something has made a mistake, especially with computer models, one variable can be off and it can throw the whole thing out of whack. So, um, so that's really what, what I want people to do is to be able to trust themselves to make a decision and then to compare it to any sort of external uh, aid. What do you say to that everyday person who picks up the book, The Art of Clear Thinking, they begin to change, but then their friends and family take note of the change and go, no, go back to being you. I swear that's why so many people quit doing great things because they, they want to be accepted by family and friends. Yeah, that's that's a that's a tough problem. And I think it comes back to clear thinking. So being a good decision maker, when you're a good decision maker, it's a universal skill that applies to everything. So you can help realize who are these people that are helping you, that are providing, giving you energy and who are the people taking it away. And it's a little bit easier to be able to uh, to be able to distance yourself from them, because ultimately, when we're making a decision, we're trying to assess what's the good that's going to happen. What's the probability of that happening minus what's the bad minus the probability of that happening. So when you break things down into a simple framework, it helps you to make better decisions, whether you're talking about who should be in your life or if you're flying supersonic combat missions uh, over Afghanistan. But, you know, having that cleared mind, it, it really is a place for, for me. It's it's a place that I want to visit a lot. It, it, it's almost I always tell people I'm addicted to it, because when you get into that moment, where, where you can hear yourself breathe, where the mind's eye is in total focus. You love being there because there is a sense of peace. Yes, you you feel uh, you go into the zone. Yeah. And so that's that's what we try to do when we're teaching pilots how to fly, to, to really get into this zone where they're not worrying about uh, what's going on after the flight, what's not going on before. You're staying in the present moment. You're not uh, letting any mistakes snowball. A lot of students have that issue. They'll make a small mistake and they'll be focusing on that mm -hmm. mistake. And we're mm -hmm. flying a mile every three seconds of closure. So it's very easy to let a flight snowball out of control just by making a mistake, kicking yourself. Ah, I'm going to fail this flight. I shouldn't have made that. And then to make another mistake and then another mistake. Yeah. So we teach our students to really stay in the present moment to to allow ourselves a debrief afterwards so anytime you make a mistake don't worry about it now we'll worry about it in the debrief wow. um, and that really helps with our human performance aspect where can people go to find out more about you this book and everything else that you're teaching people because i mean you you are a leader yeah anywhere i'm on all the social media platforms hazard lee h-a-s-a-r-d so with an s uh lee l-e-e -E, and then the art of clear thinking it's available anywhere books are sold. We did some really unique things with the audiobook. I uh, read parts of it while flying. Good. So I think it's the first time anybody's done that before. So uh, I'd love to hear people's feedback on it. Love to answer their questions. I think this book has the ability to uh, to change the world in a positive way. You need to get in that jet and do podcasts, dude. That, that would be awesome to hear that every every time we tune into an episode. I would love to do that. <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I'd love to. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? All right. You too.